Thank you, Abba Father, for this day. Thank you, Father, for your Shabbat. I just want to thank you, Father, that we are so privileged, my Father, as yesterday we were up on our little Mount Zion hill, and it was just such a sense of a privilege of being able to be part of a covenant, to be part of a father that has brought us to this place of where we can keep covenant. Because everything about the walk that we have with him is a covenant relationship. And that is what a husband and a wife has. A husband and a wife makes covenant. They cut covenant. And so for those that are not in covenant, they are missing out on a much deeper relationship that the Father wants because they have not understood that everything is about covenant. And so, Father, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you for what you are doing in this hour. I just want to thank you because you are wanting to be able to have a covenant people, a set-apart people, a people that will be able to look to you and walk with you. Father, I thank you that this church is so important because we need to understand that there is a wake-up call that needs to go forth and that your watchmen are speaking. But how people are always wanting to silence your watchmen because they do not really want to hear what is to go forth. But watchmen have been put there from the beginning. Your prophets speak in this book and they speak blessing, but they speak destruction. And they speak many, in many, many of your prophetic words, the destruction that is going to come. Destruction that's already been and destruction that is going to yet come again. So, Father, I just want to thank you that there can be a wake-up call that can come forth. I thank you, Father, that already um, years ago you gave me a poem. In 2013 you gave me a, a poem to say, Wake up, wake up, O sleeper. Wake up out of your slumber. And so I thank you, Father, that this church is so profound as you have given a poem that goes with this church, you have given a dream that goes with this church. And that you help us, Father, in order to be able to come to a place of where we can come to the revelation of the understanding of the depth of this church. For us to understand that every single one of these churches represents where we can be different in different one in the different one of these churches and it's so interesting how most believers would just want to say well I'm the church of Philadelphia but father once we really go deep and we look into these churches and I just want to thank you that you have chosen this time and the season that we are in right now to be able to want us to go deeper into your word deeper into your scriptures in order to be able to understand your heartbeat for the hour. Because truly we need to understand this book of Revelation, because everything of this book of Revelation is about the revelation of Yahushua, wanting to be able to be the one that takes us by the hand and lead us. And it's Yahushua, the one who is warning us. It's Yahushua, the one speaking. Yahushua, the one saying, you need to wake up. You are alive, yet you are dead. And so, Father, I just ask you, please, that you will just come. As Yah, where we stay, we look upon a mountain called the Sleeping Beauty. And it's clearly a woman that you can see that is asleep. A head of a woman, and you can see it's a, she's asleep. And, Father, every time I look out at that, I see a bride of yours that is still asleep and that needs to be awakened in this hour. So, Father, I prophesy and I speak. Wake up. Wake up, O sleeper. 
Wake up out of your slumber. The shaking is going to come and the shaking needs to come in order to be able to shake everything out of us that is not of you. And so I thank you, Father, that the world is going to come under a shaking because it needs to shake. Because for too long, we have been in a lull. We have been in a sleep. We have been in a slumbering place, thinking that it's business as usual and the world is just a wonderful place. It is wonderful for those who truly are walking set apart with you. As we do not need to fear that which is going to come upon the earth because our trust and our faith is in you and you have many promises that for those who put their trust and their faith in you that you are the one who goes before us father and if we need to perish just like Esther said she was willing father to stand before the king and her words was if I perish I perish but she was willing to stand before her king and she was willing to intercede for her people. Father, this is a time of an Esther generation of your people that need to raise up now. A people that need to understand that they have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. They have come into this earth. They have been created for such a a time as this and that is why it is an Esther generation that needs to come forth that needs to be thrust forth that is not hidden anymore but needs to be thrust forth to be able to take a stand for you and for your kingdom that needs to come and so I thank you father I thank you for the word that you are going to share with us today. I thank you that you open up our spiritual ears and open up our spiritual eyes because there are those that have ears but cannot hear. There are those that have eyes but do not see. And so I pray, Abba Yahuwah, that you will help us to be able to be those that will have ears and eyes to see and to hear that which your Ruach is wanting to share with us in this day through this church of Sardis. I praise and I thank you for this in Yahushua's name. Amen. Amen. And so praise Abba Father for the fact that he is doing a mighty work in this hour and what excitement there is that we have covered four churches already and we've gone in depth and now we come to the to the next one the church of Sardis and so we're going to read from Revelation chapter 3 from verses 1 and this we're going to have to go deep because it's just a few verses but there's so much in this for us to understand what is the father trying to share with us what is the Father wanting to open up to us? Because there's much depth. And we're really going to need to be able to unpack and go through line by line, verse by verse, in order to be able to understand, um, precept by precept, to understand what it is that the Father is wanting to be able to speak to us through this church. So we have a look, and in verses 1 it says, And to the messenger of the assembly of Sardis, right? So what is Sardis? What does Sardis mean? Because this is written to a church, Sardis. Now, Sardis means red ones. But what does this red ones mean? Because whatever this name of this church is, it's significant for us to understand. And the name of this church is going to be everything of what is going to unfold pertaining to this church for us to be able to understand what Yahushua is wanting to reveal to us through this church. And so the Hebrew word for red is the word odem. Odem. 
Its actual meaning is red clay. So the word for red is odem and its meaning is red clay. And this is the red clay that comes from the origin of that word odem goes back again to Adam which means son of the red earth. So the name Adam, Adam means son of the red earth. Its meaning comes from the, re, from the Hebrew word Adama. And that Adama is from which Adam was formed out of. Adam was formed out of Adama. And that was that the, the dust of the earth, the red soil. So its name also refers to the reddish color of the soil, but it also refers to the reddish color associated with human flesh. So that's why it is odem for red, and this odem is red clay. So Adam, Esau, and Edom are derived from this Hebrew word which means flesh. Hmm, interesting. So we are going to understand this red ones. So they are, so Edom, are de, so Adam, Esau, Edom are derived from this Hebrew word which means flesh because Adam was formed out of the dust of the earth and he became flesh. So these are the flesh ones, people of the flesh. It's the people of the flesh nature. It's the flesh nature of man. So we must understand, until Father breathed his life into Adam, what was he? He was just a flesh man. He was made out of the dust of the earth. And he was a flesh man, a man that became flesh. But when Father breathed his Ruach into him, when he breathed his Ruach into him, then he became the spiritual being that was a flesh body, but he's carrying the presence of Yahuwah because he has the breath of Yahuwah, the Ruach of Yahuwah dwelling within him. And that is why he was able to commune with the Father. And that is why he was dwelling with the Father. He was fully spirit being, even though he lived in a flesh body. And so his soul man, the mind, the will and the emotions was totally submerged with the spirit because the flesh man of his flesh man being this body that he dwelt in was had a mind, a will, it had emotions, but it was only alive to the father. It was not it hadn't yet eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But you see, when it ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then it became it was Adam and Eve had to be put out of the garden because they were now no longer a perfect being created in the image of the Father with a spirit that was alive only to him. Now the spirit was going to be contaminated by the flesh nature of man which was going to be the mind, the will and the emotions because that's what happened when he ate from the tree of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And this is everything of what we are going to understand about this church because this is a church that we must make a decision. The Father speaks to this church and it tells it, you must wake up and you must make a decision now. And so you see Everything what we are going to understand is the time and the season that we in. Our choices are going to make all the difference in the times ahead. Because for us to be able to be a people that are going to be set apart for the Father, it's going to depend on the choices that we're going to make.
because we're either going to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or we're either going to eat from the tree of life. And that's what we need to understand, what is going to be able to unfold from this church of Sardis because this church of Sardis is everything about this red ones which are the flesh ones. So these are the flesh ones because interesting Adam eventually sold out our birthright of being those that were supposed to stand before the father and eat only from the tree of life by allowing himself to be subject to his wife who was deceived. Remember, Adam was the one who was given the instruction. Adam was the one who revealed, who was revealed to him from the mouth of Abba Yahuwah. He was spoken to say, do not eat from that tree or you shall die. He was the one that was told that. And then he was the one that was supposed to um, relay the message to Eve. And we understand that something went wrong there. And now when Eve was standing before him, after she's been deceived by the serpent, he was the one that had to take the stand and say, no, my wife, we do not eat this fruit. Because you see, we have a decision to make. You can, you can be deceived, but you still have a decision to make. You can either go with the deception or you can stand for the truth. The choice is yours. And this is what we need to understand today. So Adam and Esau and Eden all comes into the same root word, which is from this son of the earth, of the red earth which is Adama, which is this earth. And interesting, Esau is the son that represents the flesh man. And Jacob represent the, represented the spirit of Yahuwah. So therefore we must understand, Esau is also, he was red, he had red hair and red hairy hair on him. He then eventually became the father of the Edomites that dwell in the mountains of Edom that are red. And again, it represents the flesh ones because Esau chose to be able to follow the way of the flesh. He chose to follow the desires of his mind, of his will, of his emotions, not going by the spirit of Yahuwah, not willing to be able to follow what his father had taught him according to the ways and the Torah of Abba Yahuwah. And so that's why it's so interesting because this is the very church that he turns around and he says, he who has the seven spirits of the Lua and the seven stars say to them, you see, this is the church where Yoshua is again speaking to him and says, the seven spirits, he's the one revealing himself again as the seven spirits. Why? Because this is the flesh ones that are not led by the spirit of Yahuwah. And they need to be able to be led by the Spirit of Yahuwah, which is now the seven spirits, which we've already read. We've covered it in detail from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 2. And it's the seven spirits, which is the Spirit of Yahuwah, the Spirit of Wisdom, the Spirit of Understanding, the Spirit of Counsel, the Spirit of Might, the Spirit of Knowledge, and the Spirit of the Fear of Yahuwah. And you see, when we are not... Um, when we are flesh beings and we're not led by the Ruach of Yahuwah, we can do all the right things. We can do all these works, but our works will not be complete because it's works that will be of the flesh and what comes from the flesh profits nothing. And that's what we must understand. The Father wants people that are going to be led by the Spirit of Yahuwah, not led by the flesh man. And this is what we must understand. And so, we read, we continue to read, and the messenger of the assembly of Sardis, he who has the seven spirits of Alua and the seven stars says this. So what was the seven stars? Remember we read in Revelation 1 verses 20 that the seven stars are the seven messengers and the seven messengers are the ones that are being sent to the seven churches in order to be able to relay the message. They are the seven angels. 
seven messengers. Now listen to what he says. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Okay. So I know your works. So understand, these people are doing works. There is works that they are having to do. They're doing all these works. But at the end of the day, what works are they about? So we look and we see they have a name. Now what is this name? This word name is the, na the word onama. And this is the, the, the name is a name used for everything which the name covers. Everything that the thought or the feeling of which is aroused in the mind by mentioning, hearing, remembering. The name of one's rank. So it's the authority. So you see, a person is reckoned by name. So people will know you by the name. So what name do they know you? It's like I've always said, it's the character of that name. And so we need to understand that this person, um, the character of this person is everything of what this name. So he's saying, you have a name. You have formulated a name for yourself. You have established even maybe a ministry for yourself. You have your name on a billboard. You have a name on the, in the front of the churches. You have your name. You've made a name. And, you know, your name is there. You have a name. That you have a name. So some of these people, specifically in the specific church that he's talking about, some of these people could be people that are maybe evangelists or pastors or prophets or teachers or normal people. They all have a name, but some of them have made a name for themselves. And some of them with that name comes the works that they do. So they've got a name and they've got many works that they're doing. So the name comes with the works that they do. But look at what he says, that you are alive. You are alive, but you are dead. So the name, a person reckoned by the name, known by name, that name is the authority, the character. So what is the authority or the character of this person that has built up a name for themselves are they dead? What does he mean? Are they dead? And it looks like they've done works. So it's not a person that doesn't even have any works. They might have works, a lot of works that they're doing for the Father. Maybe they're going out there. Maybe they're preaching and they're bringing in souls and they're doing all these things. And they've gone to Bible school maybe. And they've become a pastor of a Bible school or a pastor of a church. But are they those that have been led by the Ruach of Yahuwah? Or are they those that have been self-appointed? Because now I've gone to Bible school, because I, I, I feel I want to go in this direction, so now I'm going to go to Bible school. I mean, if you go and you, um, really, if you drive through um, our areas like in, um, take for example, um, Yeovil, which is a place where I used to minister a lot in that area amongst the Ethiopian people there. There is just in a few blocks more than 40 churches. They spring up all over. Spring up. All these churches spring up. Man, every little corner there is a church. And one of the people in there, because I'd gone to preach a message and... and Really, it was a very hard message that was to be preached. And then I was, I think I went, I don't know if it was for a three or four Sundays that I was preaching a message there. And then um, where they'd asked me to come and minister to them. And then when the one, the second week after the message that the pastor had heard, 
the second week when he um, when he uh, um, decided to go and take a walk around the neighborhood and he said he counted 40 churches because my word to them was this okay so you have all these churches in this area but let's see the prostitution is more than there's ever been Fornication is more than it's ever been. You've got um, uh, uh, um, poverty all around you wherever you look. All the destruction that you see in those areas. But man, the churches are there. So what are the pastors preaching? So the people that are coming to the church, are they really being taught to change their, their character to change that they could become more like Yeshua or are they just being preached a message that is the fact that we're going to prosper and we are blessed and it's all about prosperity and blessing and there's never a time of dealing with repentance, never a word being spoken that they need to repent, turn from their wicked ways. No, it's just how the Father wants to bless me and this is all you hear. I mean, I remember going and I'm sitting in the one before it was, uh, um, I went earlier and then I sat into another service because that one building was being shared by two churches. It was being shared for the Congolese people from Congo and then it was being shared by the Ethiopian people from Ethiopia. And when I sat there, I, was, I went early, so I went and sat and was listening to the Congolese man pastor preaching. This is the closest I've ever come to standing up and wanting to rebuke a person. Which is when this man turned around and he said, well, if you follow the Father, you will never have any hardships in your life. You are never going to go through anything. You are not going to go through any hardships or anything. He's only going to bless you. And you will not go through any hardships. Because he's come to bless you and to prosper you. So I sat there and I listened to this and I thought, oh my goodness. The scripture that came up in my spirit was, no servant is greater than his master. But man, this church was packed with all these people. And they're hanging on the lips of this pastor that is now speaking to a bunch of people that come from extreme poverty, extreme witchcraft in their bloodlines and yet at the end of the day telling them that they don't need to worry about anything because the father is going to bless them and they don't have to go through anything and this is when I realize what the father speaks in this church where he says they have a name yet they they are dead because why? They have many works, but their works are dead because their works are not bringing life. Their works are not changing the people's lives. And that's why you'll have 40 churches in that area and the people are not changing. The witchcraft is still there. The prostitution is still there. The alcohol is still there. The, 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 the drug abuse is still there because nowhere is there preaching being spoken that you have to change from your wicked ways. And if you really look and see what has happened to the Christianity that was being preached from the pulpit in the last 50 years, what has happened? We have had a gospel that's been preached now that is just a gospel of prosperity and prosperity and prosperity. And this is where we just gain more things for our flesh. But yet we are sorely lacking in the spirit of Yahuwah. Because the spirit of Yahuwah, it is more people being led by a kundalini spirit than having to be led by the spirit of Yahuwah. And these people will see many visions and many dreams. But is it really from the spirit of Yahuwah? And so in Revelation chapter 3 verses 2, he says, wake up. And strengthen what remains. So that word wake up. What does it mean? That word wake up means. Gregor Gregorio. 
to watch, to give strict attention, be cautious, active. It means to take heed, lest through remission and indulgence some destructive calamity suddenly overtake one. You see, if the people are still indulging in the works of the flesh and think that they are those that are going to cross over to the other side of the River Jordan and they're going into their promised land, they have another thing coming their way. And I'm yet to say to you today, even if you are one who is keeping the Torah, even if you keep the Shabbat and keep the feast and keep everything, but if you have not learned to be able to be led by the Ruach of Yahuwah and you are, have crucified your flesh man to die in your mind and your will and your emotions, you are not one that is going to be able to just be thrust forth into your promised land. Because the Israelites in the wilderness that continue to rebel against the Father, that continue to gripe, moan, complain, they didn't enter in. We must understand the hour that we are in. Because there are many. It says of here, we must give strict attention. We need to be cautious. We need to be we need to understand that we need to be awake. We need to watch. We need to be vigilant. We need to be watchful. But then there are people that try and crush the watchmen. Because the watchmen that are speaking the truth, they say, oh my goodness, these are constant prophets of doom and gloom. Because all they know how to preach is destruction. No, no, no. They don't know how to only preach destruction. They understand the blessing of Abba Yahuwah. For those that are obedient, there is a blessing. For those that continue in disobedience, there is a curse. He says, choose. There's blessing and there's curse. Choose the blessing for you to have life. But that blessing comes with obedience. Obedience to the word. Obedience to the spoken word of Yahuwah. And obedience to the written word of Yahuwah. And that means the full word of Yahuwah. Not the fact that we're just going to keep doing Torah portions, Torah portions, Torah portions. And at the end of the day, never go into the rest of the scriptures in the New Testament that gives you Galatians chapter 5. That tells you these are the works of the flesh. So we, we must understand. That we need to be balanced. We need to be very balanced. We need to be balanced. And that's why to be balanced means to be led by the spirit of Yahuwah. And that is why we need to have a full and solid foundation. Because otherwise we are going to have many works. Yet we will be dead. We will have many works. Works that we can keep of the flesh. But yet at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't help you to be able to keep the Sabbath and keep the feasts and keep all of that. But yet how do you treat people? How do you continue to behave around people? Those are the things that we need to look at. And then it doesn't help you the fact that you go to the church and you prophesy and you do all these wonderful things and yet you don't keep his Torah you don't keep his Shabbat, you don't keep his feast. So you see, there's a balance in everything. These are those that walk in spirit and truth. Father wants those that walk in spirit and truth. And that's why he's saying to this church, you are not following Maruach. So there's many people in the Torah movement that are following the letter of the law above the spirit of the law. And that is what we must understand. We are to be able to walk out our salvation with fear and trembling, allowing the Father to be able to lead us. And many times, for us to be able to be led, it means that there's going to be some or other destruction that we go through, some or other thing that we must go through, in order for us to be able to understand that He's bringing us back to Him. So you see, uh, you know, the Scripture says in Romans, um, I think Romans 2 verse 28 that says, All things work together for good for those that love you who are not called according to his purpose. So do you see, instead of you seeing the evil in everything, can we start to see the good in certain things? Can we start to see, oh, hang on a second, this of you has come my way, but because this of you has come my way, well, it's not just the devil. And we want to blame the devil for everything. The Father can allow you to go through things 
so that you may be able to be humble to your knees, to seek his face, to go deeper with him. You know what? Right now, here, we, we, we are fighting a predator that is wanting to come and eat our 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 produce that's been put into the ground so now we 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 are putting seed into the ground and we are we are trusting the father for our harvest because we need the food that's need, gonna need to come from the ground and now we've got a predator that is going inside there and wanting to eat all the leaves of our of our beans and is wanting to be able to eat all the the the, the leaves of our, our our baby marrow and and some of our vegetation that is being being sown we we have a predator now you know i could have gone underneath those nets and i could have started rebuking the devil and coming up against the devil because now the devil is wanting to be able to do his thing in having to steal our food. No, instead, I will go on my knees and I will start weeping before my father and saying, Father, if there's something that we've done that's wrong, I want to repent before you today. If there's something that we're not doing right, please will you show us? Humbling myself before him and saying, Father, I don't understand. We're trying to do what we can on our side. But we need you to be able to help us on the other side. We're not farmers. We don't know how to farm. What is it that we're doing wrong? Or, or should we do something differently? We don't just want to go to the shop and go buy pesticides. What can we put in these plants? Give us wisdom, Father. And so you see, from a situation... Instead of you standing there wanting to rebuke the devil about everything, which is how some people live, I don't understand how some people can just live like that. Rather humble ourselves before the Father and say, Father, draw closer to him. Go deeper in the well. Go deeper in that well that needs to be able to go deeper in the well to come and weep before him and say, Father, what have we maybe done wrong? I don't know. He says, something that we're doing that we shouldn't be doing. I said, this is your creation, Father. I understand your ecosystem. I understand that everybody needs to eat. I understand that. But we need to also eat because one of these days we're not going to have food. So please help us here, Father. You see, then I become humbled. And I come before my Father and I put my trust and my faith in Him and allow Him to be the one to be able to come and do the work that needs to be done that I don't know how to do. Do you know that just after that, Elsie's dad phones her and I don't know if he met up with someone or he heard someone or what it was about farming and this is what they need to do to be able to plant according to the cycles of the moon and I thought well father you know seed time and harvest time seed time and harvest time has everything to do with your sun moon and stars because it's the seasons so at the end of the day we need to be able to find out what plants is for what season and when should we plant and when shouldn't we plant because seed time and harvest time has everything to do with your seasons and maybe there's a little bit more that we need to know that we don't understand about your creation that we need to understand. You see, but if we don't cry out to him, if we don't draw near to him, if we don't dig deeper in the well, we are not going to be able to get the results of intimacy with him. And so we got choices in everything. In everything there is a choice. I'm either going to go get upset and start fighting the devil or I'm either going to surrender and allow the Father to be able to come and have his way. And then I live in shalom and I live in peace and I'm not fighting an enemy. I'm surrendering to my Father and I'm cultivating my relationship with him. So we must understand that there is a time now that we need to wake up so it doesn't help us to be able to shut our ears to what is going on around us and say, well, I don't want to hear of anything that's going on around me. I don't want to hear of these things that's going on. I don't want to hear of what is going on in with these, vex, with these, um, um, these injections. I don't want to hear about these things. 
I rather just want to be, I don't want to hear anything. Let me just stick my head in the ground and be oblivious to everything because maybe if I don't hear it, <laughs> I'm going to be fine. Well, we need to understand something. A prudent man sees the evil day approaching and prepares. So if we are not... This is something the Father spoke to me many, many, many years ago. And that is why I need to understand, as a watchman, there's two things that I need to do. A watchman, there's two things that a watchman needs to do. A watchman needs to have, number one, his ear at the heart of the Father. We need to understand what the Father is saying. But at the same time, a watchman needs to have his finger on the pulse of time. Because a watchman needs to know the season and the time that we're in. And a watchman needs to be aware of what is going on. I am not saying that we need to go and indulge ourselves in every evil thing that is out there. But what I'm saying is we need to be able to understand what is going on. It's like with me, when I start to see this little video that's going on because of this riot and this one because of that riot and this thing and this thing, then I can start going back and saying, okay, Father, what are you showing me? Hmm, time of the red horse, my child. The red horse, I'm about to take the peace from the earth. And man is going to kill one another. They're going to raise up and they're going to kill one another because it says they're going to slay one another with a sword. And a great sword was given to him to be able to understand the red horse is going to remove the peace from the earth. So are we supposed to be coming into a time of peace or is the peace going to be removed from the earth? Because when the red horse comes, the peace is going to be removed from the earth. So that is how we are able to discern prophetic words. We must know the scriptures to be able to understand. If we are now in the time of the unfolding of the book of Revelation, then we need to understand that the red horse if we've had the white horse, then the red horse needs to come. And the red horse is going to be the unrest upon the earth because it says in Revelation chapter 6 from verses 4, for another horse, a fiery red, went out and it was given to one who sat on it to take peace from the earth and that they should slay one another. And a great sword was given to him. So we must understand all these riots that are coming up and you see the way the police is just striking the people and hitting the people. I cannot believe this. It is unbelievable to see. Unbelievable. But you see, this is when the peace is going to be taken from the earth and then we will understand that then after that there's going to be the black horse and the black horse is, is the one that is going to be the third seal and that is going to be when there's going to be a measure of wheat for a denarius. So, which means that food is going to become very scarce and what you're going to pay for food is going to be very, very expensive because food is going to be very, very scarce. So this is why we need to wake up. Are you awake to understand the season and the hour that is upon you? Do you see how fast things are moving? Do we see? Do we see the locusts that are destroying our crop? Do we see the, the floods that's destroying our crops? Do we see the fires that's destroying our crops? Until eventually there will be no crops. Do you see? Do you remember that when we went into lockdown, when we went into level 5 lockdown, do you remember that when we, I know that I'd woken up just after Pesach when we had the resurrection of Yeshua and, and I knew the time and the season that we're going into is great destruction because I spent three hours declaring end time scriptures and by the end of that I knew, I feared and I trembled knowing the time that is ahead of us. And the first thing that I said on that Sunday morning to my husband and to Elsie was, we got to get seed. we got to start buying seed. we got to go get seed. But you see, all the nurseries were closed. All the places in the big supermarkets where there was seed, it was closed because it was deemed non-essential, um, non-essentials. 
So lockdowns came and they took our seed away from us so that we couldn't plant any food. So imagine when lockdowns start coming, you're going to need to get a pass in order for you to be able to get into the stores and now you can't even buy seed. How are we going to survive? Do you understand? These are the things that we need to be able to understand. That's why he's saying, wake up, because it says we need to watch. We need to take heed, lest through remission and indolence, 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 some destructive calamity suddenly overtake one. So you see, we are not supposed to be sleeping. If we are his bride, we are wide awake. We are those with with oil in our lamps that it's not going to be caught unaware because we are preparing for the day ahead so this comes from the root word egri, it's, it's G1453 egiro, egiro and that is to cause to rise to arouse from sleep to awake to arouse from the sleep of death to recall the dead to life so one who is dead in their flesh man. You see, it's the bless me club. I'm going to surround myself only with the bless me club, but I'm not even going to want to hear anything of any prophetic word that might come that is speaking that calamity is going to come because I don't want to hear that kind of word. So I will surround myself with those things that are going to tickle my ears to recall dead to life, to cause to rise from a seat or bed. You see, this one is asleep. It needs to wake up. It needs to arise from a seat or from a bed. It needs to be awakened. It needs to arise from sleep. It needs to arise from inactivity. So if we've been, if you are still inactive in not preparing, where you are not preparing for the day ahead, then when the time comes, you cannot turn around and say, but I didn't know. Father says, what have you got in your hand? What have you got in your hand? What you have in your hand, I can multiply. But if you've got nothing in your hand, what am I going to multiply? And we are going to understand this scripture very clearly because I'm going to unfold to you the revelation that the Father gave me months ago in Matthew chapter 24 to be able to understand that when we see these things coming, are we going to prepare? Then at strengthen, to strengthen is sterizo, sterizo. And that is to make stable. So he turns around and he says, to wake up and strengthen what remains as it's about to die. So understand, if these people do not wake up now, they're going to die in their folly. They're going to die in the fact that they have been asleep. And they are lulling away while destruction is on their doorstep and they're not heeding to the sound they're not heeding to the warnings and they're going to die in the calamity that is about to come because they have not prepared. So it's strengthen to make stable, place firmly, steadfast, fix, to strengthen, make firm, to render constant. So you see, to strengthen is going to be to render constant, to confirm one's mind, to turn resolutely in a certain direction. To turn resolutely in a certain direction. Which means we are going to have to turn to be able to start to stand by the word of Yahuwah. And we are going to have to strengthen ourselves in the word of Yahuwah in order to stand in the days ahead. To confirm, to be fixed. To steadfastly be stable. Set. So are we going to be steadfastly set on understanding that doesn't matter what the enemy is going to bring my way. It doesn't matter what is going to happen. I am going to stand on the word of Yahuwah and I'm not going to be moved by that which is going to be able to be do by 
um, what the, 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 the world is doing right now. Am I going to bow down to the fact that it's another variant and another variant and another thing and another thing? And this is all part of the lies. And you know, when you have believed the lie, then you will be deceived. So the deception that's come upon the earth is because people have believed this lie from the beginning. This has been a big lie that has been given to us that they've, they've exaggerated something that was supposed to be very small and they've exaggerated it to be very big. And from this exaggeration, they've actually made it worse than it really was. And you know, the other day I watched a video and it was quite scary. The seven steps, it was certain steps of what they follow from the time that you go into hospital. The first thing they're going to do is they're going to do a test on you and then that test is going to prove that you are positive. You get, you get, listen, you get rewards. Those people that do these things in these hospitals get, um, they get paid for a test that they do. They get paid for the test being positive. Then they get paid for giving you medication for the fact that you've got this thing. Then they get paid for the fact that, that um, they then be able to put you on a ventilator and then uh, the medication, then it's the ventilator. And it's every step that you are doing that from the time you get into hospital with these things, there are steps that they take you through. And those people are getting paid for all of this because it's bringing up the numbers and this is what they want. And this is scary. But this is all part of the deception. But people are bowing down to this deception and now because they've believed the deception, they are now going to bow down to the serpent seed that's being offered them. And this is where we are. So he turns around and he says... Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have not found your works complete before Alua. So what does he mean, I have not found your works complete before Alua? That works is the word ergon. And that is that which is um, that which one occupies it, uh, themselves with. That which one undertakes to do, anything accomplished by hand, art, industry or mind. An act, a deed. A thing done, an act, a deed, doing labor work. That's the works. So the Father saying that the works that is coming from our hands, from our deeds, from our labor, from our mind, he's saying, I have not found it complete. So the works that they are doing, so everything that they've put their hands to, be it in their job, be it in acts, be it in deeds, be it in labor, be it in the things that they're doing that is the thing that they occupy themselves with. He has not found it complete. Now that's so interesting that that word is being used, complete. I have not, your works, I have not found your works complete before Alua. So the works that you are doing, I have not found them complete. Now that word complete is also the word perfect. And that is the word pleiru. In Hebrew it is tamam or tamim. And that means to make complete in, in this instance, yeah, in this very case, wow, when I read this, it just blew me away. Because listen to what it says. It says, to, it says to make complete in every particular, to re render perfect, to carry through to the end. So I have not found you complete because you have not carried through to the end. So are we going to be those that are going to be complete, that are going to carry through to the end, because we need to be able to be those that are going to have to stand and be strengthened. You see, that's why he says, be strengthened. And we need to learn to be able to be led by the Ruach of Yahuwah. And we need to be those that hear his voice and we know his voice through his word. Because if he's going to say to you one day, pack your bag, get in your car and you need to go and I will send you a sign. And all of a sudden, I don't know, maybe he sends you an owl. Maybe he sends you a raven. Maybe he sends you whatever. Maybe he sends you an angel. 
and he, or maybe he speaks in your ear, turn left, turn right, go here, go there, go, go, for you to come to the place of safety that he's already prepared for you. Because he says, I will send an angel before you that will bring you to the place that I've prepared for you. So if you have not gone deep and cultivated that relationship, how are you going to be able to be led? I, I mean, just this last week I was speaking to someone and they're saying, but you know what, we don't hear the Father like you do. You know, I don't hear the Father like you do. He speaks to you very clearly. You hear him, he speaks. He tells you this, he tells you that. He speaks to you. He doesn't speak to me like that. You know, the Father reveals himself in many different ways. Many, many different ways. You know, we can either see, we can see things for what they are, or we can see them as a message from the Father. And I have just learned to be open to allow the Father to speak to me through many different things. And he can speak to me through his creation. He can speak to me through his creation. He can speak to me through through um, little things that I pick up. He can speak to me through rocks. He can speak to me through little things. I'll pick up a little heart or a little diamond or a, um, a, little, a little seal, a ten cents. And as I go along, I have learned to cultivate my relationship with the Father in such a way that I've learned to have him speak to me in different ways. Like I said, a tree that will uproot. Father, what are you trying to show me through this? What are you telling me? I need to know what you're saying to me. Why am I witnessing this? What are you trying to say to me? And this is how we need to cultivate our relationship with him. Now look at what it says, this complete. It says, to fulfill, to cause Yahuwah's will. Now listen, this is what it's saying in this very scripture here. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have not found your works complete. I have not found your works, which is to fulfill, to cause Yahuwah's will, as made known in the law. So imagine... To find out Father's will, you need to understand His law, His Torah, His instructions. So if we have not taken the time to know His instructions, and that's why I say everything must have balance, we must have His instructions. We must be those that are having to be able to meditate on His word, and we are those that are having to be able to meditate on this word from Genesis to Revelation. We can't just be one-sided. We have to have the fullness of his word. But we need to understand Father's instructions was given to us in his Torah. And his commands was given to us. And now this is saying to fulfill and to cause Yahuwah's will as made known in the law, to be obeyed as it should be. Not that we change it. Not that we decide to say, well, now we'll only do two of them. We don't need to worry about the rest. No, I'm just going to do the two. But what you don't understand is those two are made up of the fullness of the Torah. Loving Yahuwah with all your heart and loving your neighbor is when you'll be able to work through the whole Torah. You will understand that that is the foundation of the very two um, commands. And if you take the commands, you got your first four commands pertaining to Yahuwah and your last six commands pertaining to man. And so we must understand it's summed up in the two. But now the, the, on the Christian side, we want to turn around and say, well, we don't have to keep any of these other things. We don't have to keep a Sabbath. We don't have to keep feasts. We don't have to keep a dietary laws. We don't have to eat a, a clean or unclean or anything like that. We don't have to do, do adhere to any of this because it's all been done away with. And now we are sadly missing. And now the works that we're doing are incomplete. They're not complete. Because you are only giving him one-sided kind of works. You're giving him works of the Spirit. You're worshipping with, you, with your lips. You're doing all these things, but you are lacking on the other side. Because you are not doing the fullness of what he's asking you to do. 
And so now you are lacking. And now you are not complete. So now you become a flesh being. Because you do what the flesh wants. You go where the flesh wants. And now you can be those that maybe are doing the Torah fully. But yet you still don't obey the ways of, the, of, the, of what the word says. You do your own thing. You're not being led by the Ruach of Yahuwah. Whatever you find your hand to do, you do. And you just come up with things from your own mind. And you don't seek him. And you don't take, you're not led by his leading and his guidance. We are not to operate like that. We are to be those that are led by the Ruach of Yahuwah. So this is where I find that many times when we start going on the way of the Torah, we tend to want to lose the Ruach of Yahuwah. Because now we become so self-righteous in thinking that because I keep the feast, because I keep the Shabbat, because I do all of this, I have now arrived because I'm now the bride. But I have not learned to be able to go deep in cultivating those wells and being able to go deeper in my relationship with Yahuwah to be able to clean up this, this flesh man. And so now listen to what it says. So it says, To fulfill, to cause Yahuwah's will, as made known in the law, to be obeyed as it should be, and Yah's promises given through the prophets to receive fulfillment. So tell me, if we don't even read the books of the prophets, how are we going to know what is in the prophets? That is to be fulfilled because it's the promises of Yahuwah. Now understand something. The promises of Yahuwah is not only the nice things. The promises of Yahuwah written in those books of the prophets is what the Father is saying that these calamities are going to come. When he says that they're going to have ears, but they will not hear. They're going to have eyes, but they're not going to see. That's part of his promises. When he's going to say multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, there's going to be multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, and they need to make the decision to be able to follow him. That's written in the, those are the, some of the promises that has been written in the books of the prophets. That's going to be for the end times that's going to come, that this is what's going to happen. But now we only want to take the positive things, and we don't want to take any negative thing. We must understand that my father is very balanced. My father is very balanced. He cannot allow people that will continue to be disobedient and continue in their rebellious way. If you've got a child and your child continues to rebel against you and you keep trying to correct him, what do you think is going to happen to that child eventually? You are going to have to discipline it. And so the disciplines of Yahuwah is necessary. It says, my Bible tells me, Abba Yahuwah disciplines those whom he loves. Because he loves you, he wants to discipline you. But now we want to sit and rebuke everything. So it says, to the given through the prophets to receive fulfillment, lacking nothing, being perfect. So when we looked at Genesis chapter 25, verses 27, it talks about Jacob was a complete man. Jacob was complete. He was perfect. One who lacks nothing in physical. So what does it mean? What does it mean when... So um, I'm, I'm not going to go there, but I'm, I'm just reading to you. Genesis chapter 25, verses 7, 27. I read this when I do the discipleship training. I do the discipleship training on Tuesdays and I covered this in detail when we go through chapter by chapter. We are working through the Torah chapter by chapter in depth. And in Genesis chapter 25, verses 27, he spoke of Jacob. Abba Yahuwah spoke of Jacob and said, Jacob was complete. So we're going to see the difference between the Jacob generation and an Esau generation. You see, a Jacob generation are complete. An Esau generation are these red ones of the flesh. And they are the ones that are incomplete. And what does that complete mean? That is the perfect, one who lacks nothing in physical strength, in beauty, morally innocent, having integrity, one who is morally and ethically poor, I mean pure, one who is morally and ethically pure, Undefiled, upright. Undefiled. Undefiled, they are pure. 
they are set apart. They are holy. What was Jacob's heart? Jacob's heart was to dwell in the tents of the father. What was Esau's heart? To hunt in the field for what was going to satisfy his flesh. Could he not have been satisfied with having the lambs and having those animals that he had? They had all the farming of the lambs. No, he was not satisfied with that. He wanted more for his flesh. He wanted to hunt the wild animals to have better meat. You see? The same as the Israelites in the wilderness. Father gave them the manna that come from heaven. They were not satisfied with the manna. They wanted the meat. The quails had to come. And what did he do? How many died when the meat was still stuck in their, in their teeth? He judged them. He came up against them. So what are we doing? Do you understand? Do you understand the difference between what he's revealing to us over here? So he's saying that the difference between a complete work, the complete work is one that is working, that is going to be in line, in obedience with his spoken word, with his written word. They are a righteous remnant that is set apart unto the Father and they are lacking nothing because they don't need anything. All they seek for is the Father. And they are morally innocent. They are undefiled and they are upright. And that is when we, when I went through this Genesis 25, when I went deep into understanding Genesis 25, I speak and I explained how there's two nations, two kinds of people that were birthed in the womb of Rebecca, one was going to be the rebellious, disobedient ones, and one was going to be those that are going to be the bloodline of Yahuwah, that are submissive, that are seeking the courts of Yahuwah, seeking his tents, seeking his tabernacle, seeking to dwell in his presence. And that's what we must understand. So, I'm going to end off by sharing with you because next week I will then go deeper into this church. But I want to share with you a dream that I had in 2014. On the 25th of October in 2014, we had just come back from a very hectic trip that we had done um, to Greece and to Turkey and Israel, much prophetic work that we had done. And on that very night, the first night home, I had this dream. And I shared this word. This was part of the prophetic word that I released um, at the time of, on the first day of Sukkot. I released this prophetic word. And this, the Father got me to release this word because exactly at the time of Sukkot, which was in, um, you know, we were, uh, it was the, the end of September, beginning of October, um, we were going to be exactly seven years since this prophetic dream was given to me. It's a prophetic dream that I had. And I'm sure there's many of you that have heard it, but repetition, I've given this dream many times. But you see, as we are covering this church, this dream just absolutely just comes into this so beautifully as the Father in this week has been speaking to me about those that have ears and do not hear, those that have eyes and do not see. And as he's been sharing with me um, certain scriptures, and this is exactly what we are living in right now and next week I will unfold the scriptures that was given with this dream I did it at Sukkot and now again we are going to release this again with this church for us to understand that there is a wake up call that is coming forth because this is the church that he's speaking in this hour that needs to wake up 
because they are in the valley of decision and they need to make the decisions. So, this was the prophetic dream that I had. I, sh I saw thousands and thousands of people like in a valley. I'm standing on a high place and I'm looking down at all these people and I say to myself, who are all these people? So I'm standing on this mountain on a very high place and I look down and as I look down, I see multitudes, multitudes. So I see many people and I'm saying to myself who are these people because there's so many people and I'm looking down at all these people next minute Yoshua is standing next to me and he says these are the multitudes multitudes in the valley of decision decisions need to be made to follow him and be set apart to follow his ways these were not people that did not know him. These were people that knew him but were not obeying him and following him. They were many. Because I still stood there and I said, wow, they are many. So these were many people. He's sealing people off now and cutting others off from those that are his and from those that are not. That's what he was saying to me. He said to me, these, let me read it again. So, these are the multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Decisions need to be made to follow me, was what he said to me, to follow him, to follow me, and be set apart, to follow my ways, it's him speaking. These were not people, these are not people that did not know him, these are people that know him, but were not obeying him and following him. They were many. He is now sealing, he said to me, I'm now sealing people off and cutting others off from those that are his and from those that are not. So he's sealing some off, those that are his he's sealing off, and those that are not he's cutting off. We need to now more than ever listen to him and discern and draw near to him and focus on him. I saw him drawing a line in the sand and then I saw a big chism. So as he drew that line in the sand, there was a big chism being um, being um, happening you know like when an earthquake starts happening it starts off by just a little little crack it's like a little crack and then that crack goes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually it, it forms like a crater that just separates the ground from each other and I saw a big chism forming like an earthquake opening the ground. And if you on this side, you cannot get to the other side. And he said, a little leaven will leaven the whole lump. A little leaven will leaven the whole lump. So what is the leaven? The leaven is the sin. A little sin is going to leaven the whole lump. So you see, you cannot follow him all perfectly on this side and still continue to, harp, uh, to carry on with those sinful ways that are there. Now is the time to get rid of everything. And then he said, every decision you make is going to cost you. If you sow to your flesh, you will reap of the flesh. If you sow to the spirit, you will reap of the spirit now this is the word that father gave me um i think it was the 5th of january last year and again now in this week he's again keep speaking the same word how many times have you heard me speak i'm forever speaking saying if you're going to sow to your flesh now, if the decisions that you're going to make now are going to be decisions that are not going to be led by him and you're listening to people and you're listening to things and you're making your decisions based on that, you are going to fall. But every decision that is made by the Spirit 
you're going to reap of the Spirit. So if the Father is leading you by the Spirit and he's telling you, this is what you must do, but you want to listen to what the flesh says and you want to listen to what man says, those decisions are going to cost you in the end. So we need to hear what he's saying. You will reap of the flesh if you sow. This is an hour to listen to him only and be led only by him. He will guide us. We are not to move if he does not move. The gap between good and evil is getting bigger. And if we don't decide now to listen and obey him, we will be taken out by the enemy as the whole world is under the sway of the enemy. And if we hang out more with the unrighteous, we will become more unrighteous. I started screaming in my dream. Wake up! Wake up! But they could not hear me. I was crying. And Yahushua said, They are deaf. They cannot hear. And they are blind. They cannot see. Now is the hour to wake up. And choose to obey and follow me in everything. Then I prayed and I got certain scriptures. And these are the scriptures that I'm going to share with you next week as we continue with this teaching. But I want to share with you this week. Father again led me. I was actually having a conversation with someone. And the Father led me again in those scriptures because I have been meditating and, uh, uh, on many things that is going on around me at the moment. And I said, these people, you know, I was so frustrated because these people, you speak and you speak and these people do not listen. They just keep bowing their knee to a beast system. It's a beast system. And I had to put a message together I put a message together in this week that I had to send to someone and I put this message together about everything of this, um, this where this it started in the Garden of Eden and to understand the word for Makia, what does it stand for? And all these things, I put a quick message, it's 30 something minutes that I put together just to send to this person and I stand back and I say, you know, you keep sending stuff to people. You keep giving them all this stuff. You keep showing them all these things. You keep telling them all these things. Yet, they do not listen. Yet, they do not hear. It's like they don't, they're not going to listen. If they've already made up their mind, and this is almost like what the father said to me, my child, they've already made up their mind. And if they made up their mind, you see, where the mind goes, the man follows. Where the mind goes, the man follows. So it doesn't matter what you give them. You can keep giving them stuff. They already have a reprobate mind. Their mind is reprobate. They reprobate of mind. A reprobate mind is one that has only shows to the flesh and will follow what the flesh wants. It's a reprobate mind. And so I went and looked at the scripture and I had to meditate on the scripture and it's in Isaiah chapter 6. And in verses 5 it said, Woe to me, um, woe to me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell amongst, um, in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the sovereignty, the sovereign Yahuwah of hosts. You see, when you've seen the sovereignty, when you've seen the sovereign of Yahuwah of hosts, then you will know what you see and you will know what you hear. And one of the seraphim flew to me and having in his hand a live coal which he had taken with the tongs from the slaughter place and he touched my mouth with it and said, See, this has touched your lips. You, your crookedness is taken away and your sin is covered. But listen to verse 8. Now this was a dream. I had this dream on the 12th of... Um, uh, on the 15th of the 12th in 2020 I had a dream where I saw these people coming and this angel was touching their lips with a call of fire now listen to what he says in verse 8 
I heard the voice of Yahuwah saying, Whom do I send and who would go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go, and you shall say to this people, Hearing you hear, but do not understand. And seeing you see, but you do not know. Make the heart of this people fat and their eyes heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and shall turn and be healed. You see, what is the problem with the people? Their hearts are fat, fat, filled with the flesh and flesh desires and flesh desires of the flesh man. It's what your mind wants, it's what your will wants, it's what everything of what you want. You want everything to go away so that you can enjoy your life. And that's why he says, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart. Because you see, their heart is the mind, the will and the emotions that needs to be submitted to the Father and shall turn and be healed. And this is exactly what the Father, when the Father showed me this, he said, this is where, this is the time that you're living in right now. This is the time. And you speak to them, and you speak to them, but they do not listen, because they reprobate of mind. Reprobate of mind. I mean, Israel has now just opened up their borders. And how many people are going to fall? Because now Israel is saying, you may return to the land of Eretz Israel. Just go and have your little jab. Just go and put your poison in your body. And then you can have, if you don't have one that's recent enough, then you're going to have to take some booster shot. And then you're going to be able to come. And then you can come and enjoy the land. What are we going to sell our souls for? Because there's many that are going to sell their souls. There's many right now that are in the valley of decision. From when this word was given out in October to where we are now, things have already speeded up even more. In October, they were not speaking about anything becoming um, forced upon us. Now it's already becoming mandated. Where are we now? What is the time ahead of us? We need to wake up. We need to understand what the Father is saying. Because there are multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. And we need to make the decision now more than ever to be able to be those that are led by him, to be those that are hearing him. There's many things that can be spoken. There's many, many things that is out there, but not everything is of him. And therefore we need to be very, very careful in the times that are ahead of us. And everything needs to be lined up with the word. And the word is a complete word. And you know, when you really start to read the books of the prophets, you understand. I mean, yes, this is Isaiah. Look at what he's saying to him, you know. And he said, go and you, and you shall say to the people, hearing you hear, but do not understand, and seeing you see, but do not know. Make the heart of the people fat, and their eyes heavy, and shut their eyes. You know, was this easy for the prophet? Was it easy for Jeremiah to be able to tell the people that they're going to go into destruction? No, it wasn't easy for him to do that, yet it was what he was being told to do. What boldness we need in order to be able to stand and tell someone, you're going into destruction. It takes a lot of boldness. But you see, there's not many that want to stand up in that kind of boldness. That's the strength. Chazak. Be strong and courageous. Chazak, chazak. You're going to have to be strengthened. And you're going to have to stand. And that's what we need to do in the days ahead. Or else he will find us not complete. Our works 
will not be complete before him. Let us pray. Abba Yahuwah, I just want to thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you that your word truly is a sword that cuts through the heart of those who seek it out to be able to help us to turn back to you, Father. Father, we truly want to be those that will not be like those that are in this church that was found not complete, that they are alive but yet they are dead, that they have made a name for themselves but yet their works are of the flesh. These are flesh ones. These are ones that are like Esau that was willing to sell his birthright for a plate of food. Abba, what are the days ahead of us? We can't even boast in thinking that we can stand right now because we don't know the days ahead of us. And every test and every trial helps us to stand. Help us, my Father, to be able to know what it means to bow more to you. Help us to stand in the times that we're in that we will stop wanting to fight the enemy but instead bow down to you. Help us to be those that have eyes to see, Father. Eyes to see with understanding because you say they have eyes, yet they hear, yet they do not understand. They have eyes, yet they do not know. Because you say they have, they have ears, Yet they do not understand. They are forever hearing, but they do not understand. They are forever seeing, but yet they do not know. And that is why you want to be able to give us in this church. We need the Ruach of Yahuwah that comes with the seven spirits. The fear of Yahuwah, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, the, the might. The council. We need your seven spirits. We need the spirit of your word to be able to come. And Father, help us to be able to be those that we will put the call of fire to our lips. How can we speak peaceful things when that is not what you want us to say? Why would we... Why would we speak something that you are not saying just because we want to be known or seen by the people or to impress people? We are to speak what your word says. If this is your word, that is the final authority. And if people get offended because of this word, they are not offended with the person who delivered the word. They are offended with you who wrote the word. Because this is your word. And help us to understand that we are not to take the offense. Because at the end of the day, the word is the final authority. And your word is your word. And your word will stand until the end. Father, I pray for those that are still in the church. That have not turned. That are still asleep because they have not turned back to the commands of your ways. Of your Torah instructions. I pray, Abba Yahuwah. Will you wake them up? Will you wake up the multitudes in the valley of decision, Father? I woke up screaming out of that dream, and that dream still torments me to this day because I see so many, Father. And for those that have bowed only to the letter of the law, and they are not being led by the spirit of your Torah, Father. I ask you, help us, Father, to be those that will be led by your Ruach of Yahuwah. That we do your Torah out of love because we love you. And that we will spend more time studying your scripture than studying what rabbis say and what rabbis think. But we hear what you say and what you think in the pages of our Bibles. 
Help us in this time, Father. We really, 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 really want to be those that will be able to humble before you and have you come and have your way in us, Father. Father, I ask you, please forgive me, Father. Forgive me where my mouth speaks things that it shouldn't speak. Help me, Father, to be able to have that call of fire upon my lips so that the fear of Yahuwah will always be before me. But that I will speak that which you want me to speak with authority and power that does not come from myself, but that comes from you. And that I will not fear man, but that I fear you. So I praise and I thank you for your word today. In Yahushua's name, Amen.